show on Twitch where you, the viewers, are in control. Featuring special guests from all over the Twitch community and the Los Angeles comedy scene. Enter a variety of wild scenarios with colorful characters and help steer the story in whatever direction you want. You can vote in polls to make choices, submit images over Twitter and Discord. You can pay to play sound effects. Road ends in 100 feet. What the f***? It's your show too, friend. Hop on in and experience everything now. Welcome! Hello! It's me, your boy, Jaws! Thank you, thank you. Welcome, folks. A rare morning jonks. Well, I guess for some of you it's the afternoon. In any event, my name is Jonks. I am a magical wish-granting demigod. I live at the top of this mountain. Travelers journey from far and wide to visit my mountaintop domain, hoping that I will use my powers to make their greatest desires come true. But they may not know that it is actually you. Yes, you, the viewer at home, the Council of Jonks. You are ultimately the ones who will decide whether or not I am able to grant their wish. When a traveler approaches, they will tell me what they desire. We will ask them questions, we will interview them, we will find out about their background, we will find out about their wish, and then you, the council, will vote to decide whether or not they are worthy of having their wish granted. Now, if it's your first time here, you'll notice in the top left, it says sacrifice $5. If a traveler approaches and you don't like their vibe, or you don't like their wish, or generally you just think, they're evil. You can donate five dollars, and I will eat them, blood, bones, and all. But, use that sparingly. Also, if you subscribe today, you can sign my guest book. Let's have a look at the guest book. Here are some entries from the last time people were here. Dottie said, kiss his statue with the asterisks that make it sound like an action. Uh... <laughs> Kaya in the Sky said, Jonks, is the rumor about InSync reuniting true? Ask uh, the goddess, etc., and let me know. Uh, yes, the rumors are true. They're getting back together. Keep an eye on that space. And so on and so forth. If you'd like to submit your own entry to be entered in our guest book and displayed on stream, subscribe to the show. You'll also get a raffle ticket. Play the raffle bumper. Wow, look at that! Every subscriber to Everything Now Show during today's marathon will be entered one raffle ticket. And if you gift a sub, you'll get another raffle ticket. And every time we hit 25 subs, we'll pick a new winner. So at 50 subs, there'll be two winners. At 75, there'll be three winners. And of course, the grand prize winner will not only get a shirt, they'll also be taking home a copy of Family Guy Volume 3 on DVD. Signed by the entire Everything Now Show cast. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Anyway, folks, you get the gist. Let's jump into it. I think I see our, oh, excuse me, I have some indigestion. <sighs> Pardon me. Uh, I think I see the first traveler approaching. Oh, hello, Jonks. Greetings, traveler. So good, so good to see a, a, a fellow, uh, Good Samaritan. Ah, I appreciate your kind words, Traveler. What is your name and what brings you here? Um, my name's Father Fogarty. Thank you for uh, joining me in this, in this bountiful moment we share together in Morton the World. Yes, yes, Father Fogarty. Welcome, welcome. What is it that brings you to my mountaintop domain? Well, I've come to you because uh, I run an orphanage and the, the sweet youngins need some help and... I've relied on the kindness of strangers for so long, but now I've I've come to the man the man at the mountaintop to try to 
Try to get some help for those sweet young boys. Ah, a, and it a is all boys. Man. A man with noble intention, something rare at my mountaintop domain. Usually travelers come here hoping for, you know, weird sex stuff or riches. But finally, someone has come with a noble quest. But, Father Fogarty, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that you've just won a fabulous prize. Yes, in addition to whatever, yes. In addition to whatever you're about to wish for, just know that you'll be taking home a fantastic prize. In just a moment, we'll be revealing what that is. And whatever it is, Mr. Jonks, Mr. Jonks, Dr. Jonks? Just Jonks is fine. Whatever it is, Jonks, I'm going to give it I'm going to give it right away because I don't need I don't need things. I I have everything I need with the good book here and with my acts of service and my uh prayer. Well, that's very kind of you, Father Fogarty. Whatever whatever it is you win, it'll be up to you to decide what you do with it. Now, tell me what your wish is. Well, the, the boys at the orphanage need a little help, and uh, I was hoping you could help us. Um, you know, the Girl Scouts will sell cookies. I'm trying to offload 75 South Park NFTs. <laughs> South Park? Explain to me what that is. Well, it's 75 NFTs that the orphanage purchased for uh, five figures each, and um, it's... What is an NFT? An NFT is like a digital... Surely it's something made of gold or diamonds, something incredibly no, valuable. It's like a code. John, get the bonus wish ready. Let's have a look at your bonus wish, Father Fogarty. Congratulations, Ooh. you'll be taking home a Meowzeltov. And I'm giving this one pillow. away for sure. Congratulations, I'm yes. I'm giving this one away without a second thought. Celebrate the high holidays, or I guess, I don't know if Hanukkah is actually a high holiday. In any event, celebrate Hanukkah. With a, uh, what is, whatever, you get it. <laughs> okay. All right. There it is. Meowzeltov. That's what it, I thought it was. I thought it was meow with Hanukkah was the pun, and I was like, how did that fit? All right. Anyway, uh, you were telling me about these valuable NFTs that cost five figures. Surely they have some utility. They can cure illness or. Well, they're one of a kind. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And, and, you know, if you want to know what some of them are, there's Kenny. There's Stan's dad coming, you know, when he's at the computer. And oh, I think one. I've seen this meme. There's there's cum everywhere. He's just covered in jizz. Yep. Good one. And that's an NFT? Yep. <laughs> there's Black Chef. Okay. What? And you got to sell these? I need to unload these fast. <laughs> why? Why fast? The, the orphanage is in dire, dire straits right now. They're gonna close us down. The bank wants to shut us down just because we owe six figures of debt. Well, when one we of purchased our- purchased all these NFTs. One of our council members, Action Potential, is offering to buy the Jizz one for $3. How much did you spend on that one? That one, we spent, we spent about 25,000 to acquire that one. 25,000. That we considered one of the more valuable ones because $3. it's so notable. We have one that's just Cartman sitting at a desk in school. That one doesn't feel very iconic at all. No, that seems like it's just kind of a random still. Yes. Yikes. Well, Father Fogarty, I see that you are a noble man and a man of good faith who- and I am. Simply desires to do the best for these children. I do want to give our council an opportunity to ask you some questions to get a general sense of your character because although we know that you are a man of God and here to serve the interests of the children, we don't know much else about you. Council members in the chat, do you have any questions for Father Fogarty? Anything you'd like to know about him or his background that would help you decide whether or not he is worthy of having his wish granted? Here's a question from Gorif friend. Well, what made you choose the path of priesthood, Father Fogarty? Well, uh, I definitely am one, and so <laughs> what it was for me was that I decided, you know, life is so hard, and so many people are just trying to get a get ahead in the world, and, and what about if we gave back? What about if we helped people? And what about if we became good people that people actually were willing to help more uh, uh, lucratively? I see. You said you are definitely a priest. Yes. So surely you could give us your favorite Bible verse. Of course. 
Nope, don't open it. I need without to, looking. I need to. If it's your favorite, you should know it. Right. <laughs> You'd have it memorized. Right. <laughs> So I returned and considered all the oppression. <laughs> okay, we can see you. We, we cut to the wide. Well, Come on. All right, I'll just read it. I'll just Let's read it. Let's hear what. No. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun, and behold the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comforter. Comforter? Like a blanket? It kind of seems like you're reading this for the first time, Father. And on the side of... Also, someone asked who this card meant. And on the side of the oppressors, there was power. But they had no comforter. I guess there's something about sleeping here or something. And this know. is your favorite <laughs> verse? Yes, yes. This is Eclex... Eclex... Exodus? Eclexodus. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes? <laughs> Four, five. Right. Increase of vanity. Oh, I wouldn't know anything about that. You know, Father, I'm starting to have my suspicions about whether or not you really are a man of God. Uh, but our council members will be the ultimate judge to determine whether or not your wish. And listen, if we do manage to unload these 75 NFTs at market rate, actually not at market rate, at- Well below market rate, No, 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 seems. at prior market rate. We oh, I see. Current, prior yeah, yeah. Rate. We gotta get it at market rate when I bought it, maybe plus 10%. That's gonna be a tough sell. Um, oh, also, I need council? you to make the check out to Chris Chalakian. Why, who is Chris Chalakian? He's my broker. I see. <laughs> and you can Venmo him. Venmo. Chris Chalakian on Venmo. Council, I would love him. if someone would trigger the phone so that we could talk to somebody from Father For Fogarty's uh, That's who orphanage. Maybe one of the orphans or something like that. In the meantime, uh, do we have any other questions for Father Fogarty? I've got one. Uh, you know there's pictures in this? What, of like, Jesus? Samson grinding at the mill. <laughs> now that would be a great I NFT. Guess he's dancing? <laughs> Where's Samson the Samson is... grinding at the mill NFT? Samson is seen in the picture working at the mill. He cannot see the woman who sits near, to whose treachery and love of gain he I owes his captivity and loss of sight. Ah, that's real. Alright, looks like the phone that's call's not AF. coming. <laughs> No phone call coming, so we do have one other question here from Mitch Connors who asks, Is shitting on your foot and kicking someone in the face a death threat? What say you, Father? No. Okay, well, I feel like we pretty much got the whole gist of this guy's vibe. Uh, I am ready to prepare the poll. Council members, in a moment, you will be faced with a decision. A vote to determine whether or not we grant Father Fogarty's wish to offload his South Park NFTs for a profit and save the orphanage. I hope you're ready, Council, because this is a truly important decision you're about to make. Nahum? No, Nahum? What is that? It's one of the guys. What do you mean, one of the guys? I'm looking at it. It's one of the guys. It says Nahum 1. Ooh. Oh, no, that's not. Oh, there we go. We got to change the style. Ah, actually, this style's okay. We'll work on that. We'll work with this. If I just click it, we'll. Uh, at the bottom, there's a bunch of different other formats. You can just... Yeah! Ah, that's cool. Ha Habakkuk? That looks, that looks cool. Have you ever heard of Habakkuk? This is another guy. I don't know what that is. <laughs> this is another guy. They don't tell you about it. It kind of feels like John you're and Matthew. reading this for the first time, Father. No, no, no. I'm just trying to keep you on your toes, Jonks. All right, you well... You Christian man, Jonks? I am not. So I am Jonks. Esther? Come on. I bow to no deity. The Book of Esther? That one's normal. This is a real one? Yeah. That's wild. That one's got Purim, I think. All right, I think <laughs> let's close out the poll. It appears that the council has voted to deny your wish, Father Fogarty. Wow. Unfortunately, our council has decided that you are not worthy of having my magical powers serve your desire. 45 children are going to go hungry tonight because well, of this chat. And not because of me, because not of this chat. I see. Well... Play Fortunate Son! That's unfortunate. What? Play Fortunate Son! What do you mean? You're John Fogarty, right? Fogarty! No. Hell yeah! That's, there's a, it's a common name. Oh. I picked a common name. I mean, I was given... <laughs> All right, Farewell, guess, Father I Fogarty. I Chris, the Uber's waiting. We gotta go. All right. Farewell. 
Well, Council, our first traveler has come and gone without their wish granted, but ultimately, you are the decider of whether or not they are worthy. As a reminder, you can use the sound alerts to trigger things like a bonus wish, which we gave him. Father Fogarty was taking home that cool uh, Jew pillow. I forget what it said. I forget what it said, but I'm sure he's going to love that. Uh, so use the sound alerts to trigger bonus wishes and the magical phone booth. Let's p pull up the magical phone booth just so we can show what it looks like. Okay. There's a button. <laughs> Yes, the magical phone booth with the power to connect you with it. Whoa! We built a world! Thank you so much for helping us hit our goal! Yes! We've hit our goal, which means that one lucky winner is going to take home a free t-shirt once their raffle ticket is pulled. So, uh, raffle winners will be announced at the end of the stream tonight, but we'll keep a tally of how many winners there are during the day. So now we have one raffle winner, and at 50 subs, we'll pull an additional raffle winner. Anyway, folks, use the magical phone booth to connect the traveler with anybody from their life. Uh, yes, multiple entry. Uh, here comes our next traveler. Oh my goodness, I did it! They said I'd never do it. They said your head's empty as a, a, a soup ladle in a hot summer. But I made it up the mountain. Welcome, traveler. What language are you speaking? Oh, what do you mean? I'm speaking good old American English. I see. Your dialect is confusing to me, traveler, but I'm starting to That's understand. That's close-minded of you. Traveler, what is your name? And well, where do you come from? I'm Mr. Beverly Rambunction, and I come from my, my middle school, but more... More specifically, I come from a small town where things are simple. And then I moved to the big city and everyone thinks that I'm so dumb now. Everyone thinks I'm so stupid because I don't know, I'm not, I don't learn things like, I don't know about like science and math and, I, and, and like how planes work and what a computer does and <laughs> what is the government about and what's, uh, what's on a map, uh, what, or like, uh, like how do you cook food? <laughs> or, mm, I could keep going. <laughs> Beverly Rambunction, it appears that your life has been turned upside down. Yeah. I can only imagine how difficult that must be for you. Is yeah. that is why? Is that why you've traveled your this far? Your dialect's confusing to me. Ah, uh, you know You're some. Speaking like a guy in a movie trailer. <laughs> I, I, oh, so you do know what movies are? I've seen one movie, and that's Babe, Pig in the City. Oh, fitting. <laughs> You must really relate to that film. It was on a VHS that I used to cram into my little TV in my, my small room. I see. Well, what is it that you've come, uh, journeyed all this way to wish for, my friend? Yes. Okay. So I would like it so that the whole entire world works whatever the way that I think it does. Because I'm tired of being made to feel stupid when someone asks me how something works and I give an answer and they're like, that's not, that's not what that is. So I'd like to wish for the whole world to just work exactly as how it goes in my head when I think about it for the first time without any other input. Tell me a little bit about how you imagine the world to be. What are some of the key differences between the world that you've been exposed to in the big city and how you'd like to see the world operate? Well, it's more that I'm not getting into all the nuts and bolts of how, how you know, science and technology works. Like, I, I think I got it pretty much set straight, but people tell me that it's wrong. I would like to be right. Like, for instance, uh, they say, like, your head's in the clouds, except you don't even know what a cloud is. And I do know what a cloud is. A cloud is an angel's hot breath, which is frozen in the sky as they are laughing in delight about the, the little shenanigans that are going on that they're watching below them. And everyone's like, okay, that's not true. It's some sort of gaseous uh, recycling of water. And I, I don't think that's right. So. I would like for it to, to be what I say and not what they say. I see. So you want that to be true and what? You want like science textbooks and history textbooks mm -hmm. to reflect your worldview? Yeah, just whatever is going on in my head. I need the world to match up exactly with that and never divert from it at all in every scenario. I also want to be like seen as cool and I want to be seen as funny. So what I think is funny should be funny and what I think is cool should be cool. I see. Mm -hmm. Your wish makes sense to me, Traveler. Thank yeah. you for clarifying that. And thank you, Theo from Eden, for the subscription. Uh, subscribers, please let us know if you want to sign the guest book. We'll make an entry in the guest book for you. Uh, traveler, 
I think your wish is a noble one. Uh, please tell me a little bit more about your experience in the big city. I'd like to know what it is that inspired you to come all this way. Was there a breaking point, a, something that tipped the scale that broke the camel's back? Basically, so I moved to, to Burbank, right? Oh, the big city of Burbank, <laughs> yeah. California. And they told me, come to the movie theater to see, uh, I don't know, some sort of picture that I hadn't heard of. Um, and let me tell you, there are 900,000 movie theaters in Burbank. And somehow I went to the wrong one every damn time. And then when I got to see the movie, I wasn't laughing at the right parts. It was uh, Theater Camp by Benjamin Platt. <laughs> and everyone had all these inside jokes about it. And I didn't get it at all. And and I got there so late because I couldn't find the movie theater. Because in my, my town, there's a single, it's a one light town. And there's one kind of, we watch movies in the church. Um, so if you're saying you're gonna watch a movie, you go straight to the church, not to all of the night. Traveler, take one step to your right to be under the microphone. <laughs> Perfect. I did it without even looking at my hands to see what's right or left. <laughs> Incredible. Perhaps you're not as dumb as you think, Traveler. Maybe it's not that I am dumb. <laughs> Traveler. It seems that you are a sweetheart who simply has found themselves wandering into a world that you don't understand. Yeah. And rather than seek to understand it, you've desired to change the entire world to fit your world. I'm not interested in changing at all. Um, and nothing that I've ever thought is problematic. So if the world was just the way it is for me, everyone would come to see that it's beautiful and perfect. I think you're onto something, Traveler, but I want to give an opportunity for our council members to ask you some questions. Yeah to see if they think that you Yo, are worthy. What was ahead, your name see, again, Traveler? Mr. Beverly Rambunction. Beverly Rambunction, that's right. Uh, yeah, all right. go ahead, see if you want to live in the world inside Beverly's head. Council members, do you have any questions for Mr. Rambunction? How, uh, how are babies made in your world? <laughs> oh, well, there's this big old sort of baby salad bowl in the sky, and you toss the ingredients for a baby into this, like, this nice bowl, not a, one of those metally ones that makes it clang when you when you move a wooden spoon about it. It's an old country bowl. And so you put in, you know, someone's personality, you put in the kind of music they like, you put in their <laughs> eyelashes, and you put in just all the things that make a person a person. And you mix it all together in the sky. An angel does it, mix it all together in the sky. And then, you know that little lip? on the end of some mixing bowl so you can pour out the batter in a way that doesn't get crazy. Right. They pour the baby out, out down, down from through the clouds and then it rains and then uh, out of the ground. It goes, rains one baby on the ground. It rains ground. one baby. I see, and you use that same bowl for making salads? We make salads down here. Oh, I see. Sorry, I guess. Salads are not a heavenly gift from the angels. Understood, that was a confusion. And salads are gross. Okay. Those are not no gift from the angel. So in your new world, after your wish, if your wish is granted, there probably would be no salads. No, there would be salads, but everyone would agree all they're the bad. time that they're bad. Got it. <laughs> it's just that the, my opinion would be everyone's opinion. I see. I can't change that there's salads or war. Well, you could with magic, but... No. <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll move past that. That would that. be darn crazy. I'd have to have a big kind of statue with all magical powers to do that. Well, here's a question from one of our council members. In your worldview, what happened on January 6th? <laughs> well, <laughs> to me, what happened on January 6th is what happens every year on January 6th, which is the six days after New Year uh, potato salad celebration. Uh, and we actually, in my town, black out all media and have no idea what could possibly <laughs> be going on anywhere else because we have to focus so much on potato salad, which I might add is nothing like regular salad and is absolutely delicious. So that we have literally no clue what could possibly be going on anywhere else except in the bottom of the spoon that's digging into the potato salad. Uh, that we have six days after New Year every single dang year to celebrate the fact that, hey, 
we made it more than five days into this year and we didn't screw it screw it up yet. Didn't screw it up. Time to break out the potato salad. Yeah. Well, it's also Armenian Christmas. That's also I'm hearing it. That's also Armenian Christmas. Okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I I think we're nearly ready now to prepare a poll to determine whether or not your wish will be granted. Again, the wish is to make it so that the entire world subscribes to your personal worldview. Yeah, basically. I did see someone ask how I feel about the LGBTQ community. Yeah, well, I guess I let's get your take. Say... Pro, okay. Two thumbs up, Two thumbs up for the <laughs> LGBT. You heard it here first, folks. Mr. Rambunction. We don't have nine uh, AMC theaters in my old town, but we're all basically gay. <laughs> <laughs> I Whoa. see. All right. Well, that is very, that's a very <laughs> endearing People quality. have a lot of notions about what it means to be in a small town, and that's not all true. I see. Some think. towns, no gays. Some small towns, all gays. It's like that one island. Do you know about this one island where like 90% of the population is randomly twins? <laughs> no, I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story they tell in in my town because of how many gay people there are. I they see. make sort of a comparison of like, how could this even happen? But it's just one of those crazy but true things. Well, I suppose that is starting to make your perspective on how babies are made a little <laughs> bit more clear now. Yeah. In any event, uh, the polls are open, Council, and so the time is now to vote to decide whether or not we will grant Beverly Rambunction's wish to make everyone in the world share their worldview. Yeah. I remember... <laughs> You're all gonna start thinking like me, so it's basically a wish between being a happy little camper and just miserable because you're you're arguing about whether 2001 Space Odyssey is like good or not. Well, <laughs> Beverly Rambunction, it appears that we've got a runaway here. Yeah! Our council yeah! has voted to grant your wish, and so now it's time to say the magic words. Whoa. I'm going to say them. If you know them, you can say them along. If you don't, just sit there quietly and wait. Okay. Wibbity wobbity oh. wonks. Babe. Your wish has been granted city. by junks. Wibbity wobbity wonks. Your wish has been granted by junks. Wibbity wobbity wonks. Your, no, stay there. Your wish has been granted by junks. Stay, stay. Okay. Congratulations, Mr. Rambunction. Your wish has been granted. The world now shares your worldview. Which... As expected, I feel no different, which is right. precisely what I was hoping That's for. exactly right. And I guess we'll see whether or not this wish has any <laughs> ramifications <laughs> on the other yeah. guests' <laughs> yeah. characters. Remember, salad bad, babe pig in the city good, movies... Depends on if there's a pig oh. in them. Um, oh, wait a minute. I guess we count this. We do. Yep. Since you're still technically here, <laughs> Mr. Rambunction, although we've granted your wish, you cannot leave because... Okay. It's time for a sacrifice. God, I feel so good right now. <laughs> well, Mr. Rambunction, unfortunately, one of our council members has paid to sacrifice you, which means in a moment, I will eat you blood, bones, and all, unless you are able to convince the council to donate $10 and spare your life. Well, I shouldn't have to convince anyone because what I want is what's happening in the oh, world. Yeah. So, <laughs> if what I want is for $10 to be yeah. donated, every single person in the chat must also feel that way because uh. I'm of the opinion that that's what should be happening. That's a pretty good point. <laughs> really? what but... For the greater implications, like if Beverly gets eaten, do we all stop thinking? Well, I wow, guess we that's find out if e either... You know, and I I'll think say the this, curse is broken. The spell is broken if I'll, Beverly dies. I'll say this. There's uh, th there's worse ways a guy could go out than to be eaten just as he uh, reaches absolute, like, total synchronicity with the entire rest of the world for just a moment. It's only fair. Not to set up my own ending, but I like to think of when I die as just the visual of a cow, uh, a cow or a horse disappearing into the sunset, and that's pretty close, mentally-wise. But 
It's too bad, because I'm assuming, due to the wish, maybe, uh, maybe people will want to donate $10. It seems like no, Mr. <laughs> Hamilton. It seems that the council, you have not swayed the council to save your life. Perhaps with that, that, uh, little speech you just gave. Whoa, never mind! Oh! The council <laughs> has spoken. We all have to deal with this forever! <laughs> Let's go back to the wall. Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Rambunction. Council member Veldruck has donated $10 to save your life, and so your worldview has been spared. Thank you. You are now free to travel back down the mountain. Should, Thank you for joining us. Should be easy, because I know exactly where everything is. Okay. <laughs> Farewell, traveler. Bye. Well done, council. <laughs> Hey, y'all ever think about how Burbank's confusing? <laughs> Why are there so many malls? <laughs> Whole dang place is a mall, you ask me. Wow, I can see the effects of that wish already taking form here at the top of my mountain. Travelers, we've got another guest book entry. Let's have a look. Hold on, traveler, we gotta look at the guest book. Theo from Eden. Wait, hold on. The George Martin and the Beatles left us a message? Yeah. Okay, uh, the Beatles and George Martin uh, left me a message saying, All you need is love, bitch. Thank you. Thank you for that entry. And then Theo from Eden left me a message saying, Map took me here on accident. The gift shop is okay, but the stuff were not, oh, the staff were not helpful at all. Very confusing experience. The stone guy did give me a glass of water, though. 3.5 stars. Thank you, Thea, for meeting. We'll take that as a positive review, and uh, I'll try to talk to the staff about what happened there. We we hope to improve customer service. If you'd like to leave your own guest book entry, subscribe to the Everything Now Show. You'll get to leave an entry in the guest book that we'll show on the stream, and you'll be entered into a raffle to win an Everything Now shirt. Let's play play the raffle thing again. You got it. Check this out, folks. Yes, every subscriber or gifted sub today will enter into a raffle. You'll get a ticket. Every time you sub or gift a sub, you get one ticket. And every 25 subs, we'll pick another winner. You'll win one of these cool shirts. One of these limited edition shirts, but that's not all. You'll also get a chance to be the grand prize winner and take home Family Guy uh, Volume 3 on DVD, signed by the Everything Now Show cast. You have to be in the Discord, though. Join the Discord if you want to win. All right, I think I see the next traveler making their way up my mountain. Phew, what a tall mountain. It is Hello, indeed. Hello, good sir. A tip of the ears to you. Welcome, traveler. Thank you for climbing to the top of my mountain. And thank you, Sentinel, for the five gifted subs. What is it that brings you to my mountaintop domain? Well, uh, first of all, hello, my name is Junk. Lovely to meet you. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. That's going to be confusing. Your name is Junk. That is an yes. uncommon name. What's your name? I just heard you're the stone head on top of the mountain that grants <sighs> wishes. Pardon me. Oh, God. I have some indigestion. Uh, my name is Junks. I, yes, I mean, my, I, I actually have no idea what uh, created my name. I've had this name for all of eternity. I've existed for as long <laughs> as the universe. Your name is Junks. Yes. Are there multiple of you? Not that I know of. Oh. I think canonically there's a guy named Jinx who lives on the other mountain behind us. Longs. Who, oh, Longs. Longs. Right. That guy rules. I remember Sarah his. Rock. I remember his name was different by one letter. Yeah. He's so cool. Longs is my competition. He lives on that mountain in the background, and he also grants oh. wishes. But humble. But no other Jinxes, as far as I know. Okay, well, it's lovely to meet you. Likewise, my name Jonk. is Jink, and I. Wait, your name is Jink? <laughs> I mean, Junk. Oh. I forget. It doesn't matter. It's a long trip. I'm sorry. The I'm altitude. dehydrated. Whew. Yeah, call that. me junk. Call me jink. I don't care. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. About time. Well, jink. Yes? I just got to tell you this before we get to your wish. You've just won a fabulous prize. Ooh. In fact, you've just won two fabulous prizes. Oh my goodness, two prizes yes. for little old Junk? That's right, Junk. Whether or not we grant your wish, just know that you'll be oh taking God. home bees. Wow! 
Yes, everyone's favorite honey-making insect. Oh, You'll be taking home a bag of bees. Oh, Subject of Bee Movie. Ooh. The Jerry Seinfeld uh, vehicle from, I want to say, like 2005? Seven. Seven. But that's not all, Jink. Oh. You'll also be taking home this wonderful prize. Oh, my goodness. Taco Bell and McDonald's. Do I also get... That guy whose name I'm forgetting, don't be Will mad. Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe is going to personally deliver you Taco Bell and McDonald's. I love Willem Dafoe. There's no movie quite like Fargo. Do you agree? I couldn't agree more, Jink. Yes. So congratulations. Yes. Uh, is he in that? He Maybe. is for me. Uh, he is for you. <laughs> yes. Well, in any event, and thank you for the subscription, Veldrick. Um, you'll be taking home those two wonderful prizes. Bees and uh, d uh, McDonald's and Taco Bell delivered by hand uh. by Willem Dafoe. But let's find out if you're also going to have your wish granted. What is your Great. wish, Jink? My wish. Ugh. As you can see, I just came back from Disneyland. Oh. I was celebrating because I just finished medical school and I am now a world-renowned doctor, but... You just graduated med medical school and you're already a world-renowned doctor? Yes, <laughs> yes. Wow. Thank That's you so much. That's incredible. Thank you. Amazing. But the problem is I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be a butcher, but my parents won't support that. <laughs> So I was hoping to you, maybe you could talk to them, write them a nice letter. I want to be a butcher. Jink, why is it that you spent so much time and money going to medical school <laughs> if your true desire was to become a butcher? Well, my parents pressured me and I'm a people pleaser, you know, I'm a middle child and it's just... It's hard. I'm, I feel like through medical school, I learned with cutting people open and doing expert surgery on them that really what I find fascinating is transforming something that's already dead. And I don't want to prevent it from becoming dead. I want it to be dead, and then I make it something delicious. That seems so much more incredible to me. I like the circle of life. I like that things die. I see. Well, Jink, uh, some of our council members are pointing out that the skill set of a uh, mm -hmm. professional surgeon who chops up people for a living, yes. oversimplification, and uh, a butcher who chops up animals for a living, uh, yes. fairly accurate description, uh, are pretty much the same. So it shouldn't be that difficult of a transition for you. Well, but the problem is my parents don't support me. Oh. <laughs> I see. Well, Jink, is your wish then for your parents to support your decision? Yes. Okay, well, that's that's pretty straightforward. Sometimes we'll have people come up here and they'll be like, I wish my parents were dead or something. Oh, so that they goodness, have, I no. Know. Okay, okay. I just want them to have an open mind and to, they are vegetarians, I should say. Ah. So it really adds a wrinkle to the whole thing. That's I've why. been eating meat since a, I was a teenager, but. Well, <sighs> Jink. Oh. We're going to need you to take one step to your right because we're about to bring in the magical phone booth. Be careful. Okay. <coughs> oh! Go ahead and step up to the phone booth. There's someone on the line for you. Hello, Jock here. We're connecting. Hey, hey, it's your father. Oh, Dad, how are you? I'm... Uh... I'm pissed off. Oh, no, what's gone wrong? Uh, it's nothing, nothing's gone wrong. I'm just so freaking furious all the time. Listen, you doing? You, you, I I will say the one thing that gives me a brief respite in my endless rage is knowing that you're the best doctor in the freaking world right now. Uh huh. <laughs> and if hypothetically speaking, you found out that I no longer was the best doctor by choice, of course, how would that make you feel? I would drive my Honda Civic into a brick wall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. Thanks for that. Um, anyway, I love Disneyland. Hey, you're not cutting up no animals, huh? Uh-uh. No, no, no. I am not a meat eater. I like my vegan diet just like you, Dad. That's right. Just we eat chickpeas like and lentils in this damn house. Yes. None of that foo-foo beef and huh. pork. No delicious hot dogs or steak or Ugh. prime cuts for me. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I ain't gross. no big city steak and hot dog eater. Yeah, you're a small town vegan. That's right. Yeah, just like the founding fathers wanted. 
All right, I'm going to keep idling in my Honda Civic. If okay, I find just out, open the garage door for me, please. Oh, you're right, you're right. Thank you, thank uh -huh. you. I was wondering why I was feeling freaking crazy. Yeah, it was good talking to you, Pops. Good talking to you, too. Hey, have you seen your mom? Um, I thought she was at Disneyland last I checked. She kept just going on uh, Rise of the Resistance over and over again. Said she okay. liked the Stormtroopers. Okay, <laughs> that's good, that's good. Hey, I'm so proud of you. If you ever change anything, I'll hate you. Goodbye. Okay, bye, Dad. Step away from the phone. Step away from the phone. Watch your feet. Oh. Careful, we had somebody fall in there a few weeks ago. We have no idea where it goes. Oh. Anyway. Uh, welcome, and Raiders, welcome. If you're just joining us, my name is Jonks. I'm a magical wish-granting demigod, and this traveler in front of me, whose name is also Jonk, yes. if that isn't confusing, I'm I hope. I'm one Jonk, but feel free to call me Jink if you'd like. That might be less confusing. In any event, this traveler has come to visit me, hoping that I can grant their wish to change their parents' mind about their chosen or their desired profession. Yes. I want to be a doctor. I mean, no, I am a doctor, but I want to be a butcher, and my parents just won't have it. Jink, <sighs> how did that conversation with your father go? Honestly, not great. I feel like if I follow my dreams, my father's going to follow his dream and kill himself. And that's just a lot of pressure to put on my back. You know, people say it's not your fault if that happens, but how do you live with yourself after that? Well, uh, Jink, here's a suggestion from one of our council members. Okay. Just be a surgeon, and then you kind of, it's kind of best of both worlds. You're still no. a doctor, but you're chopping stuff up. Okay, picture this council member. Imagine I'm in there. I'm taking out a spleen, right? And then I decide to go, a uh, nibble, nibble, nibble. How does it taste? I think the other doctors in the room would be a little bit concerned. But that's what I would like to do. I see. So really the big part of this desire to be a butcher is the, the food component. You want to make food. I don't want to save lives. I want to take things that are dead and recycle them into something delicious. I think that is just a magical thing to do. And I think saving lives perver preserves lives for longer than they need to be preserved. Do you ever think about that? Maybe, maybe, I know you're just sort of like a head that's alive and sentient for some reason, but maybe... Maybe we weren't meant to prolong our lives. Maybe if the if if your body decides it's done, you're done. And you shouldn't cut it open. I've never considered such a concept, Jinx, but your message is persuading. And thank, thank you. you, uh Theo from Eden for the gift it's up. Uh Jinx, yes? you've changed my mind on life and the, oh. its importance. But it's now yeah. time. Wow, Necro Tit. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Thank you for the gifted subs. Uh, you've changed my minds, but ultimately, it's not up to me. It's oh. up to our council. Our oh. council, which oh. has just decided to see how much you really care about life. Okay. Jinx. Yes? Or Jink. Jink. Sorry. It's okay. An anonymous council member has donated $5 to sacrifice you, which what? means that in just a moment, I will eat you, blood, bones, and all, unless... Whoa! I'd like to see you try, bitch! All right. This is not the first time someone's pulled a gun on me, Jink. I'm immortal. You okay. can go ahead and try it. It doesn't work. Well, I'm a butcher, so we'll see who's Not yet, watched. you're not. You're still a doctor Shit. until we grant the wish. You're right. Jink. If I shoot you, I'll have to repair the hole and patch you up. That's right. That's the Hippocratic Oath. But, Jink, I'm yes, going to eat Jinx. you in just a moment unless... Okay. ...you are able to convince the council to donate $10 and spare your life. Okay, Council. I know I just had my whole little spiel about how we shouldn't prolong a life, but I would consider this to be an artificial death. Um, perhaps you would agree. I mean, I know there's the whole circle of life, things gotta eat other things, but like, are you hungry, Jinx? Uh, yeah, actually, I could, I could go for okay. a bite. Uh, well, how would you feel if instead of eating me, I maybe like cut off like a flank of my leg meat and then butchered you up something delicious? I mean, that would be... Sort of like tapas of the yeah. of sacrifice. I could a only little do more it so. if I want to be a respectable butcher, so I could only do it for ten American dollars. Interesting, an interesting gambit. Well, it's up to the council now. We're gonna give you, I'd say, another thirty seconds, council members, to decide whether or not you want to spare Jinx's life. Okay. Otherwise, I will eat her. I'd like to think. 
the people like me, right? I mean, how many jink are there in the world? You know, we Hard to say. Yeah. Hard to say. I know a junk who's me. I know a Steven. Oh, cool. I don't know a Steven. <laughs> Well, Jink, well, seems like they want me to die. It appears the council has decided so, not to spare your life. I'll put my gun away and die fair and square. Do you have any last words you'd like to impart upon the realm of the living before I eat I you? I think what I'd like to say is that although I couldn't be a butcher in my life, I'm happy to be meat in my death. And I think there's something really lovely about that. And I'm glad I got to see Disneyland before I die. A beautiful sentiment. Yes. Time like to eat. Some mayonnaise. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ow! Yummy! Well, I hope that in death, she's at least looking down and smiling, knowing that she tasted like a delicious filet mignon. Folks, we've just received five more gifted subs from Janels. Thank you so much, Janels. You've just earned yourself five raffle tickets. We're now only seven raffle tickets, I mean seven subscriptions, away from another winner! of the Everything Now Show merch raffle. Yes, if we hit 50 subs, two people will be taking home free Everything Now Show t-shirts. Uh, let us know if you'd like to sign the guest book, Janelle's. Do we have any other entries in the guest book we need to see? We're asking, where's everybody's guest book? Entry? Okay, just remember folks, if you subscribe or gift a sub, you can submit an entry into our guest book and we'll display it on oh, stream. Yeah, you but you don't have to. Uh. All right, I think that's pretty much all we have to cover. Let's go ahead and meet our next traveler. All right, let's go ahead and make this one quick. Don't need to do all pomp and circumstance and whatnot. I'm Dr. Gnarls Barkley. <laughs> Dr. Gnarls Barkley. Gnarls Barkley Darwin. Nar wait, Gnarls Barkley Darwin. That's right, Dr. Gnarls Barkley Darwin. You can call me Nuck if you want. Another doctor has approached my mountaintop domain. I may be just a humble doctor, but I am also looking out for all of the world and society and their well-being with my being here. I see. Well, what do you mean by that, Dr. Gnarls Barkley? What was it? Gnarls Barkley Darwin. Darwin. Dr. Gnarls Barkley Darwin. What is it that brings you to my mountaintop domain? What is it that you desire? Well, it just so happens that my dang dung grand great granddad papa a couple hundred years ago. Or what? So. Hold on. What did you just say? It's like my dad is, dad is, dad is, dad is, dad is. Ah, somewhere, okay. somewhere, your... up, somewhere up the tree, you know, uh, some dang dumb fool thought that we was born from monkeys and from fish and whatnot. You know? Oh, you are a d direct descendant of Charles Darwin. Yeah, I'm Gnarls Darwin. The father of the theory of evolution. That's right, but I want to go back, actually, and I want to rework some things. I would like to hack the human genome and uh, and how we uh, live as, as human beings in this world, actually. You're going to have to clarify your wish for me, Dr. Darwin. I don't understand what you mean by hack the genome. I'm going to try and go ahead and get uh, not so in the weeds and whatnot and be as direct as possible so everyone can understand where I'm coming from. Now, when people get hungry in movies and television, they start to see these mirages and whatnot. They look at their friend in the lifeboat next to them and they turn into a uh, turkey leg and whatnot. Right. I need that to happen in real life. Wait, okay. Survival me... of the fittest has returned, and we are making it so that if someone's hunger receptors are going haywire and whatnot, the nearby individuals will slowly start to turn into huge turkey legs, ham sandwiches, slice of pizza, half of a burger, and a cup of french fry, so on and so forth. All right, so just to clarify here. Pole! No, no, no. No, no, no. Do not pull up the poll yet. We really need to work this one out because on. I really feel like there's some logical issues here. So you're saying that if anybody, and thank you, Morn, for the gifted sub. 
if you're saying that if anybody becomes hungry, everybody around them will start to become morphing into food items. But does that apply to everyone? So, like, what happens if two hungry people meet each other? Do they both start turning into food items? Nah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that, wait a minute, if someone gets hungry, they just go and turn themselves into a food item. That's not what I was thinking, but that's an interesting wrinkle. The point being is that there is a threshold with under which people start to slowly morph into the food item. And that's only in situations similar to that of the show Survivor uh, around day 27 on a traditional season or day 24 on a... One of the more modern seasons, which aren't that great, except the last one, which had fantastic casting, if you ask me. The producing was top-notch. What are we talking about here? We were talking about the sort of logical reality of your wish that everybody who becomes hungry creates some sort of magical field around them that transforms everybody into food items. Think of it like this. You're playing World of Warcraft, you know, and you're like one of them... You're playing uh, what? You're World of Warcraft. You're, 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 you're like a mage, you know, when you get your staff of, of, of truth and you smash it on the ground, you hit one on your keypad, and then it creates this area of effect, A-O-E. Area of effect, A-O-E, ah, all right? Splash damage. Exactly right, yeah. You ain't no tank in this situation. You, you're casting spells with your little with your little wand and whatnot. In this situation that you begin to get hungry, within a certain amount of radius, Thank you, Theo, for you start to become you know, hungry, and those people within that radius slowly morph into grilled cheese sandwich, corn dog, uh, taco yaki. Uh, we're talking right. I, I understand this part bone of bone marrow with a little tostada to put the bone marrow on. I guess what I'm asking or wondering is, wow, thank you so much, Slurp Deucington. Thank you, everybody. Please don't forget that you can enter a message into our guest book if you subscribe. Uh, what I'm wondering is a specific scenario wherein multiple hungry people are in a in a area together does that mean that everybody's becoming food because like say person a is hungry and he starts to turn person b into a hot dog but person b is also hungry is he gonna turn person a into like a side of ham or something no nah, i know what you're thinking you're probably thinking that at least it was a scenario where does several this... people happen to be hungry at the same time what's going to happen as far as the turning into food and whatnot goes well it is a hung, a blood hungry feed, food, feed. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> All right, on. Doctor, Doctor Darwin. Come on. I guess my ultimate question is. No, I know what you're thinking. You're wondering what happens if multiple hungry people happen to be within the same vicinity of each other, such as in the parking lot of a Sonic hamburgers or whatnot. Right. Basically, everyone starts turning into food at a rapid rate. So does this end with everybody on Earth becoming a, a food item? That's what I'm saying. It's going to start looking like a dang dumb episode of freaking Aqua Teen Hunger Force over that end of the world, okay? My God. So that's why it's also going to kickstart, get a little kick in the pants for the people in the in government who uh, are, are causing world hunger, you know? Here's a question from one of our council members. Do they turn back into a person if you don't eat them? Dinsdale wants to know. I'm taking questions now. Anyone ask away? Yeah, here's one from Dinsdale. Do they turn back into people if you don't eat them? You there, the Dinsdale boy. What do you want? You seem like you've got a question. Yes, they'd like to know, do you turn back, do they turn back into people if you don't eat them? That's a fantastic question. Thank you very much. What? Do they turn back into people if you don't eat them? They turn back into people. The people who turned into food. Uh, no, they stay the food. They stay the food I, I was looking back on my, my journal entries that I've been writing about this for a very long time, and I'm just remembering now, yeah, you stay food. Thank you, Nuclear Goo, for the five gifted subs. We've hit our goal. Two people will now be winning. An ENS limited edition t-shirt, and we're going to increase the goal now to 75 to see if we can give away a third. Uh, all right, well, I think I'm just about ready to pull up the poll now to decide whether or not we grant your wish, Professor, or Dr. Gnarls Barkley Darwin. Uh, your you can wish- You call me Nuck for short. Why? You know, like Chuck and Charles. <laughs> okay. Do you get well, it, though? Well, yeah, I, I kind of get it. Uh, I don't. All right, Nuck. All right. Uh, we're gonna pull up so the, the poll. So the name Charles somehow miraculously becomes Chuck. Becomes Chuck. I don't know how that works with all science and. But you doesn't Gnarls start with a G? So wouldn't it be Guck? Well, I, G N C H. I see. Nook. All right, Nook. You're being rude. 
It's like yeah. Win. Yeah. It's like the last guess. name Win. Are you friends with Shaq too? Me? No, like this guy. Oh, Gnarls Barkley Darwin. Yeah. You over there? You're asking if I'm friends with Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Do yeah. you know so Shaq? Can you help me up. What? Oh yes, of course. No, I cannot help you up, but I am also friends with Shaquille O'Neal. I'm, awesome. I'm a fellow DJ. We uh, go crate digging every once in a while. Crate digging. At the Amoeba. I see. Oh, for. For rare. hot samples, you know. I see. Have you seen that video of him and his son and their friends all dancing in his house? Of course. I filmed it. Uh, my leg's in so much pain right now. That's so That's so. So sad for you, boy. But, boy, isn't that video that something else? Ain't that a great video? Well, we're going to close out the poll now. All right. It appears Thanks that our much. council has voted. No, Niles Barkley Darwin, stick around, because it seems that our council has voted, and they have decided to grant your magical wish... To make it so that every time somebody gets hungry, everyone in their immediate vicinity starts to morph into a food item. This is going to change the way society functions forever! This is great. Does, do, would you consider milk to be a food item, just out of curiosity? Cotton milk? Big old cotton jug of milk? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. I was also, just curious. Anyway, like we're going to say the magical words now. Damn shame we got rid of that uh, ketchup. Wibbity wobbity wonks. Your wish has been granted by Jonks. Wibbity wobbity wonks. Your wish has been granted by Jonks. Wibbity wobbity wonks. Your wish has been granted by Jonks. Say, Dr. Gnarls Barkley Darwin, are you hungry by any chance? Oh my gosh, I'm famished. I have not had a whoa, I have whoa. Seen, I have a single grape. My god, it's working! Oh, this is this is fantastic. How's this playing? Uh step closer to uh, over here. Over here. <laughs> That's good. My my <laughs> goodness, are you a human being? Honestly, yeah. take the hood off. It's making it worse. You sure? Yeah. <sighs> Can you <sighs> My My goodness. <sighs> You're the fellow that I was hanging Maybe out just with hold in it line. Up over your head a little bit. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> It you're, worked! You're, you're the young old wow. man I was hanging out with in line, and uh, yes. you're looking quite... This guy's turning into milk! Quite milky. If yeah, that yeah. wasn't clear... All right, this bit's done. What are you doing? What are you doing? What's get him out of here. What's get him out. Oh we get it. Oh. We got the joke worked. We got it. All right. Let's go back to the wide. Could have done a PNG, but just too many. Yeah, things. God, just too much going on. Folks! Thank you so much to everybody who's subscribed. Surely we've got some new guest book entries now to yeah, take a look at. We're going to look at those in just a moment. But I'll remind you all that my name is Jonks. I'm a wish-granting demigod who lives at the top of this mountain. Travelers journey from far and wide to have their wishes granted by my magical powers. But ultimately, it's not up to me to decide if they are worthy. It's up to you. Yes, you, the viewer at home. The Council of Jonks. You will vote to determine whether they are worthy of having their greatest desires realized. Also, if you donate $5, I'll kill them with my mouth. But now it's almost time to take a look at our guest book. Yes, if you subscribed at any point during my wish granting session today, you can write a little message in our guest book and we'll show it on stream. I think a lot of people have read, uh, wrote some messages, so in a moment, we're going to take a look at those. I'll also remind you that if you subscribed, you're going to win a raffle ticket. Yes, every time you subscribe or gift a sub, you earn a raffle ticket. And then at the end of the 12-hour marathon, we're going to draw winners. Uh, every 25 subs will draw another winner. And whoever wins is going to take home a t-shirt. And one grand prize winner out of those people is also going to take home a signed copy of Family Guy on DVD. All right, here we go. Uh, wow, those are really tiny. Yeah. Can we zoom in? We're gonna do that. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Veldruk says, I was here. You can be too. Short, sweet, and to the point. Love that for you, Veldruk. Thank you. Uh, Necro Telecomicon says, Got lost looking for Jinx's Mountain. Yes, that is confusing. We're gonna try to make the signage a little bit more clear. Ooh, still very tiny, but I think I can read this. Nuclear Goo says, Dingo ran up on this here mountain. And couldn't find Jonky. Two out of five stars. Sorry about that, Nuclear Goo. Again, we gotta fix the signs. Uh, Theo from Eden says, Maps took me here. Oh, we read that one already. Surf Juicington no, says, Oh, another one. Yeah. 
Yeah. I see. Here's another one from Theo from Eden. Maps took me around on accident, but gift shop is okay. And gift shop is okay, but staff were not helpful at all. Very confusing experience. The stone guy did give me a glass of water, though. Three out of five stars. I swear we read that one already. Yeah, yeah but that's the bit. Oh, the they just did it again. I see. <laughs> Slurp Juicington says, I trekked all the way up Jonks' mountain, and all I got was being turned into a corn dog. <laughs> Slurp Juicington, I think you probably got too close to someone who was hungry. Mjorn says, this giant stone head guy is looking grungy. Could use a power wash. Oh, uh, well... Uh, take it up with our staff, I suppose, Mjorn. And Albert Einstein, I guess, was uh, here earlier and said, Five spider monkeys can lead a fine di a dinner party if there are enough jugglers involved. Gosh, I wish I knew what the context for that was, but it must be important because Albert Einstein came back to life to write it. And Jay Nell says, Jonks? More like junks. Uh. Rude. Uh. Rude. Thank you all for those beautiful entries. If you'd like to write your own entry, subscribe to the show and tell us what you want to put in the book. But I think I see our next traveler approaching. Hello, traveler. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you today, young man? I'm doing well. Tra traveler, take one step back. That's good. That's perfect right there. Traveler, what is it that brings you here to my mountaintop domain? Well, um, it's been a long year, a long couple of years, uh, working at Pinecone uh, High School. And um, for the sake of the student body and everyone around, I, the front desk lady at Pinecone High School, am asking you, Jonks, here in this moment, to remove, take away, expunge, however you want to do it, my overt sexuality right out of my body because it is distracting the entire student body and it is becoming a problem. Wow, a noble wish, front desk lady. What is your name, front desk lady? Uh, Martha. Okay, kind of seemed like you just <laughs> thought of that. Well, I had to think about it for a second because I work at a school uh, so they encourage us not to give away our first and last name to the kids because they don't see. want us getting into private details of our lives. So I was trying to think if I should call myself just Miss Martha like I do with the kids or if I was to say, you know, my full name. I see. Well, Martha, your wish is to remove your sexuality. My white hot uh, sexual energy that bursts from me from at every moment in any given time. Martha, can you... Give us a, an example or an anecdote mm -hmm. of a time that your blatant eroticism became a problem at the school. I don't know. The kids, and well, I get, I get complaints in every day or compliments. I don't know. They say there's something about the way that I reach for a pencil to mark someone down as at the orthodontist that just gets the kids a sweating and, and, and shaking their heads on all the things that you do. Yeah, panting, oh. panting, kind of howling like a little wolf, licking their chops, kind of wringing their hands and their wrists like, oh, um, just something about the way I uh, slowly saunter to the back cabinet and maybe grab Doritos or another uh, salty snack when I feel like a kid's come in late and has low, you know, energy. It's I see. Well, Martha, uh, I have no sexuality, and so therefore your eroticism has no effect on me, but I will take your word that these children are becoming too horny to learn. And I that know. is no way for a child to be in a schoolyard. They can't focus. All they're doing all day is thinking, when am I going to get to see Miss Martha again? I'm going to pretend that I'm sick. I'm going to vomit on the floor. I'm going to break my arm. I'm going <laughs> to... I'll do fucking Children anything. are voluntarily breaking their limbs so that they can be sent to the office just for an opportunity to sneak a peek at yeah, Martha? Yeah, no, just, just so they can hear me say my, my catchphrase. Your catchphrase? <laughs> my hot, sexy catchphrase. Where I kind of push my glasses down my nose and I go, I'll see what I can do about that. I'll see what I, I'll see what I can do about that. Well, Martha, I'm going to need to take uh, for you to take a step to your right because we're going to bring in the magical phone booth. Okay. Watch your step. It comes out quick. All right. Here it comes. They say I move Any like, minute now. like lightning, so I'm over here already. Oh! <coughs> yes, Martha, please step up to the magical phone booth. We've got somebody on the line who'd like to speak to you. What do we have here? Okay. 
Just go ahead and pick up that phone. What do we have here? Hello? It's, it's Principal Thompson. Oh, hi, Principal Thompson. How can I help you? What can I do you for? Uh, when you getting that sweet thing back here? <laughs> You know that we can't talk like this over a phone. We gotta stick to penmanship, my princey pal. Mm, I'm talking into my computer, I think. Oh, oh we're, we're, you make me so, you make me feel so happy. So mm, happy when you whisper things to me. Don't, don't, don't I just... What are, you, what are you feeling when I tell you how freaking happy I am to hear from you? And how I'm just wearing a sweater. <laughs> I'm feeling a rare moment of blood moving into my, my nether regions. That will be there for probably 10 seconds, Max. Wow. And, uh, well, what would you feel if, if I told you that uh, this, this sweater isn't just any sweater? It's my Wednesday sweater. And it oh. is not... Wednesday. Hachi <laughs> machi, oh my gosh. Whoa. Are the kids all <laughs> gathered around trying to hear this phone call? They're slamming their <laughs> arms into the walls. I thought I could hear pounding against the against your office doors. I can hear uh oh Ricky from from the football team. I can hear his his woofing. <laughs> Listen, I got a little something for you. <laughs> Yeah? What's I'm, that? I'm wearing my Dick Van Dyke Show suspenders. Yeah. You're not. You're not. The ones with Rosemary and Maury Amsterdam on them. Would you believe I'm wearing what I call my wraparound bra? Step away from the phone. Step away from the phone. Step away from the phone. Watch your feet. Hey, the portal's open again. All right. Yeah. Oh, shit. That guy's still alive down more. there? Oh, okay, I guess it goes to Baltimore. Anyway. I think someone said Miss Martha Talk Louder. I had said that I was wearing my wraparound bra. <laughs> Got it. Well, Martha, I think it's almost time now for our council to decide whether or not they're going to grant your wish to become lex less sexually uh, attractive. Yeah, it's just got to stop. It's just, <laughs> I agree. People are getting hurt. Uh, one of our council members, I want, a, I guess, a clarification on what a wraparound bra is while we prepare this poll. Um, it's a bra that's stretched out over time and become too big for me, but instead of buying a new one, I just wrap around, uh, the sort of arms of the bra. Like as, a rubber band. Uh, like a rubber, sort of like I'm putting a rubber band on, like, a bag of jelly beans. <laughs> Got it. And obviously we need to remove that sexy, sexy style away from you. Uh, so I let's go ahead. I can hear animals in this forest licking their lips, just going, oh no. Yeah, even the animals want to fuck you, Martha. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and pull up a poll now and let our council determine whether or not your wish to become no longer insanely sexual will be granted. It's, it's okay. To, you have to let it go, you guys. I know you want more. I know you want it bad, but it has to go. It's for wow, the a nearly unanimous <laughs> vote coming in right now. The council seems to be pretty much of one opinion on this one. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I've seen I, enough. I, I've seen enough. Let's I, close out the poll. Sorry, I do this kind of sexy dance when I get nervous. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Martha, it appears our council has decided to deny your wish. Oh. To become less sexually attractive. Another year of endless casualties and blood and bones breaking. Oh, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess all I can wish for you, Martha, is for you to eventually become fugly. <laughs> and I thank you for that, Jones. Please do whatever you can to not watch me walk away. <laughs> I can't close my eyes. I literally can't. <laughs> My eyes! Farewell, Martha. I just saw a deer doing a wolf whistle. Wow. Well, Council, it appears we have time for perhaps one final traveler to grant their wish, but I'd like to thank all of you so far for joining us. If you're new here, follow the show. It's free. Uh, did we have any other guest book entries we need to look at before we do this? Oh, yeah, we, we sure freaking all right, let's have a look. Are 
Uh, oh, there's the one at the top there. Oh, these are okay. Hold on. Cats and Baron says, "I was waiting in line for a wish when suddenly my entire worldview changed." <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. I think I may know what that's about, Cats and Baron. I'm either sorry for you or I guess happy for you, depending on how you feel about it. I guess you feel great about it since it's your new worldview. In any event, Theo from Eden says, Maps took me here on accident. The gift shop is okay, but the staff were not helpful at all. Very confusing experience. The stone guy did give me a glass of water, though. 3.5 stars. Thank you, Theo from Eden, again. All right, I think I see our final traveler approaching. Hey, oh, oh, that's funny. Hi, yes, oh. Hey, are you the guy that grants wishes? Indeed I am, traveler. Welcome. What is your name? Uh, my name's Lisa. Lisa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is it that brings you to my mountaintop domain, Lisa? Um, I'm stuck on a phone call I really want to get off of. <laughs> oh, no. See, I was at the tailgate with my friends, but I just got a phone call from my cousin, and she won't fucking stop talking about her kid. I just don't care. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Lisa, what is it that is preventing you from hanging up the phone? <laughs> well, she just keeps talking every time I try to... Here, I'll show you. Yeah. Hey, I'm on a mountain. Oh. Oh, your son climbed a mountain? Well, that's great. <laughs> see? What uh, are you gonna do? I see. In order to preserve your relationship, you've decided that it would be rude to simply hang up the phone mid-conversation. Uh -huh. You well, need something to end the conversation. Rude, but also she just doesn't even let me get a word in edgewise, you know? I see, but physically you could just shut the phone, right? Um, that would be rude. Right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and yeah, And then yeah. she would just call me right back. Believe me, my ah. battery has died twice already. So you need to end this conversation. Tell me, yes. what is your relationship like with your sister? It's, uh, my cousin. Sorry, my relationship your cousin. with my sister's amazing. <laughs> my cousin? I don't know. We talk a couple times a quarter, maybe? Uh-oh, you're getting another phone call in our magical phone booth. Take oh, a step God. to your right. Careful, uh -huh. careful. Oh, that's... So other right, other right, other right. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Wow. Bring in the phone booth. He went to three <laughs> birthday parties? Uh, who would have thought? Oh, yes. Hello? Hi, are you talking to my mom on the other line? <laughs> oh, God. I climbed um, a mountain once. I was not, what, I heard you climb a mountain. You're on a mountain right now? I climbed a mountain once. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, uh, champ, I'm gonna let you go. Okay? No, I'm not a champion. I lose at all my sports. My oh. mom's really mad at it, but I'm not just, I'm not very uh, coordinated. Mm -hmm. That's why I try uh -huh. to climb the mountain. And uh, oh. then when I got to the mountain, I got stuck, and they had to call someone to get me down. Okay, buddy, that's awesome. I'm yeah. gonna talk to you later, okay? I'm on a mountain. Well, what happens if I want to talk to you now? Oh god, I guess there's not much more I can, can do. Can I talk to my mom on the other uh, phone? Sure. Um, hey, I'm gonna put you on with your son, okay? Hey mom! How's it going, mom? Oh, she oh oh I'm sorry. Uh hey, uh put the pull the phone back. Oh, oh, she oh. said uh, she can't stop talking to you under any I'm circumstances, so even for me. Oh I oh no. She said I you, oh. you gotta get back on the phone. I'm uh, she's finally telling me why we're on the phone. It's like a speed thing. If she stops talking on the phone at 50 <laughs> miles an hour, the yeah, phone she blows real, up. She seemed and really nervous when she, when she was talking to me for just a second. She was like, you gotta, you gotta put it back, you gotta put it back, oh, or it's all God. over, it's all over. And I never heard it sound like that, except for... Is uh, it gonna blow up for you? I'm in the house, so I guess if it blows... <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh-huh. Well, you just keep talking. If I mute you, will it? Oh, it will. Okay. Careful, watch your step. Okay. Oh, sorry. Giant pit right in front of you. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's bad on here. Lisa. Yes? I am Jeez. sorry that you're stuck on this phone call. Yeah, me too. Is there anything my magical powers can do to help you? Can you make it so my cousin won't blow up if she shuts up? And then also maybe make her like read the room a little better in the future. Give her, give her a little bit more self-awareness. Yeah, yeah. And then I also see. make sure the beers are still cold when I head back to the tailgate. Ah. Yeah. Lisa, can you tell me more about your cousin and your relationship with them so that oh. I have a better understanding of how my magic well, powers will take effect? I mean, she's got a son. We know that. That we know for um, sure. You know, my cousin, uh, she is a stay-at-home mom which is pretty cool. So she, what she does, she does a lot of volunteering work, a little bit with the church, and a whole lot 
uh, with the animal shelter. She likes playing with the rats, the orphan rats. Oh, she sounds like a very good person, Lisa. Okay, she is, but like, good people can be annoying too. We don't talk about this enough. Just because they're good doesn't mean I have to be good. Thank you. That's great. And let's yeah. talk about you, Lisa. Well, okay. What is it about you that makes you deserving of this wish? What is your background? Well, um, I am an accountant, so I deal with money. <laughs> And also, I absolutely love football. And I'm always the one to bring the cheese, if you know what I mean. Both with the jokes and with the food. I so see. it's really important I'm in the cheese station. Because Are as you, you know, charcuterie boards go quick. Uh, yes, when you're yeah, when you're getting a charcuterie board, that stuff is going to be flying off oh, the, off yeah. the uh, table. So you're a Packers fan then, I take it? Uh, no, actually. Oh, really? Because the cheese head, you'd think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> fan. I see. Yes. <gasps> did you have that cheese head on when you started climbing up the mountain? And did, by any chance, you wander by somebody who was, like, maybe rubbing their tummy? Oh, n <laughs> um, yes. And then also I got lost at the Burbank 6. I was supposed to be at the 16. Why the fuck do they do it that way? They're just up the road from each other. What the hell? But I had a delicious potato salad. Oh, tell me about it. I'm glad we all agree. And just out of curiosity, Lisa, how do you think babies are made? Um, well, two gay people fall in love. Um, and then six months later, a baby's born. It's poured out of the sky. Poured out of the sky, yep. In an angel cloud. Wow. Uh, yep, all that sounds like everything is going according to plan up here, Lisa. Listen, I'm going to give our council members an opportunity to vote to determine whether or not okay, you're great. able to hang up the phone on your cousin. While I'm here, can I ask for something else? I suppose. A good part of my butt has disappeared. Can you help oh me Oh my god. This? It's like it kind of totally see-through. Good god. I don't know if I have the powers to... She's it's actually not totally did, see-through. She's got an ass that did quit. Again. Folks, thank you for joining us during our 12-hour marathon. That was just the second segment of, I think we're doing what, six today? Eight. I don't know. So Talk the eight? show... Can't be eight. I is think it it's eight? six Maybe or seven. seven. It's Look, eight. folks, the show is not over. That's just the end of that segment. But don't go anywhere because the stream is going to keep going until 10 p.m. Pacific time. That's just the end of Jonks. But there's going to be another format immediately after this. It won't be Jonks. It'll be, I don't know, something else. Um, so stick around to find out about that. Uh, if you're a first time viewer, welcome. This is the Everything Now Show. We do interactive comedy Four right here quarter, all the time, three. every Monday, Tuesday, quarter, Thursday, quarter, and quarter. Saturday night. Uh, and if you join the Everything Now Show Discord, you'll get updates on all the different stuff that we do. And today, we are giving away our new merch. Roll the merch bumper. Where's the dang DVD? Uh. Where's everything now? Where's the Family Guy thing? <laughs> Perfect. Yes, if you subscribe at any point during today's stream, you'll get a raffle ticket to win an Everything Now Show merch t-shirt thing. I think it'll just go back on its own. We'll see. And you'll win Family Guy! One grand prize winner will get Family Guy. Let's see, will this... This way you can win. Look at that. This, this way you can win. Look this. We all signed it. We all signed it. A signed copy. Yes, signed folks. Peter. But you can only win the raffle or the grand prize if you join the Everything Now Show Discord. So if you haven't already, join the Discord, subscribe to the show, get a raffle ticket. You might be a winner. You can also buy the shirts if you don't want to try to win one. You can just buy one and get one uh, guaranteed by and going to the store. As we said, they run a little big. They run on the big they side, so big, get a also, size. We have very few smalls. Yeah, the, the smalls are probably going to sell out quick, so maybe just get one that's a little too big for you. Or Yoko. Um, but anyway, go to just type exclamation point merch in the chat. You'll get a link to where to buy the shirts. And folks, 
Uh, every Everything Now show, we can't do it by ourselves. We have to bring on fabulous, wonderful, talented guests. And this last segment was no different. So please give a big Amazing. internet round of applause for Abby and Julie. Abby and Julie, come on now. I saw the Come on, come on, come on, come on. Look at that. Sorry about your butt. Right, we're not going to get off the stage. We'll just stay here. Yeah. Abby, Julie, thank you so much for doing the show and coming here in the morning to do live comedy. Uh, we really best time of the day. The to best do time. Comedy, 11 a.m. Yes, That's and. right. Um, you are both fantastic. Is there anything that you want to tell the people at home about? Anything you're working on or any uh, causes that you'd like to promote to tell the people about? Well, you said causes, so I feel like if we self promote, we just seem like dicks. <laughs> the cause can be the cause is you. Me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The cause can be empowering you. Great. I am charity. If you look up Abby Russell, you'll find my socials there. Feel free yes, to we're also going to put them in the chat. Can yes. you do the guest command, Grant? Yes. Follow Abby yeah. on Twitch. Gen uh, yeah, genuinely, it's been a long strike, and I've been doing some art requests to make money. So. If you want to request a drawing for me, go to my socials. Mission. It's been a while since I've done this. So we here at the Everything Out Show, we support the WGA. So if you want to help them, go write their scripts. Go into those studios. <laughs> yeah. That's hey, right. Get into That's those right. studios. Someone Start died. writing their scripts. Thank Give them a break. Write another family hard. guy. All right, folks, that is the end of this segment, but do not go anywhere because there's going to be more Everything Now show very soon. We just need like 10 minutes to flip the set and prepare it for the next segment, but don't go anywhere. The stream's going to stay on, and we'll see you back we're, here. We're already cut. We're already cut. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you for What's doing that? it, yeah. truly. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's on our thing. Everything Now show. <laughs>